Hi and welcome, my name is Lawrence Baker and this video is going to be about my post-processing workflow for landscape photography. I've actually shot in exposure bracketing because I think the scene needed it. I shot with three shots at two EV apart. So here's the first one, the zero EV one. I shot an aperture priority at F8, should have probably been on F11 to be totally honest with you. I tied down the ISO to 100. So the only thing that can change between the three shots is the shutter speed. The second one is the minus two EV one, one two fiftieth of a second. So very fast, not a lot of light was getting in. Final one at two EV, one fifteenth of a second, too much light's getting in. So G on my keyboard, select the first one because I'm going to merge to HDR. If you can't find merge to HDR, click on it here, just type HDR in, you can see photo, photo merge to HDR. Control H on a Mac, Control H on a Windows system as well. So let's do that. Auto align, pretty obvious. If the three shots weren't aligned, it would align them for you. I shot on a tripod, you could argue I don't need it, but by default, I keep it on. But if I'm shooting indoors and nothing's moving and I'm on a tripod, I probably won't tick it. Auto settings means auto tone on the merged HDR. Deghosting, obviously the C is moving in these shots, so it's like a strength setting. You want a medium amount of deghosting to take place. What I would say is when this renders, you try none, low, medium, and high, because then you'll see if you need it or not. Show deghost overlay, that will show a red overlay. If you've got it ticked, if you untick it, you won't see anything. Create stack. When it's created the merged HDR shot, it will stack them with the other three and there'll be four in the stack. The HDR image will be top of the stack. Also, you're creating a 32-bit image here. That's very important to understand. So there's the D-Ghost overlay. Turn it on and off. Everything else, straightforward, merge. Now, these 32-bit images give you far more control in the develop module when you're moving the sliders. So it's to your advantage as well. A lot of people don't like HDR. I don't mind it in Lightroom because you have no control over the tone mapping. Tone mapping is taking a 32-bit image with a wide dynamic range that your eye or computer screen can't cope with and mapping it down to a smaller range. Simple as that. If you have control over that, you can ruin your image a lot. It just happens in Lightroom. We don't, but it's very nice. It's very subtle, so I quite like it. Right, here we are. There's the stack. The top one is the HDR. It's got HDR in the file name and it's .dng, digital negative. It's Adobe's proprietary raw format. Click on that to expand the stack. So there's the three images. We're going to be working on this HDR DNG image. 32 bit, D on my keyboard. Basic panel, command and control one. It's done Adobe standard and auto tone. Hasn't done an auto white balance. Using the white balance tool, come out, find a neutral color, click down. That's not too bad. I quite like that, actually. I might stay with it. Auto probably won't be that much difference because it was very warm. I needed cooling down. So I'm probably going to stick with auto. That'll do. I'm not going to play around. That auto tone is not too bad, but I want the shadows brought up a bit here. So I'm going to bring the shadows up quite a bit, right up to about plus 86. That'll do. I don't want any lack of reality. So as a HDR shot, it's quite all right as far as I'm concerned. The next thing, I'm probably going to bring the clarity up a little bit to around 20. I think that would be more than enough. I should be zoomed in and looking at stuff at least at one to one. I like to zoom between four to one and fit. So that's my choice. So F7 will show that I'm going between four to one and fit. Uh, that's my choice. I think one to one will be fine, but I just prefer four to one. So have I got any problems right now? I'm looking. I have got some purple fringing. So I'm going to get rid of that now, actually, with lens corrections and use the tool here and come out and sample that purple fringing and get rid of it by moving the amount slider. So it's got rid of that purple fringing. Just notice that by zooming in. So really, I was looking at the clarity. So back to basic, clarity slider. I'm just going to move it up to about 40 and see what I'm getting. It will brighten things up slightly because it's all about mid-tone contrast. And I think around 36 is too much. So around 25 is gonna do me. 
Z or Z to zoom back out again. You can use the space bar, but if you're inside a tool, Z or Z will always work. Dehaze a tiny amount because it shifts colors. Bring the vibrance up a small amount to plus 23 and saturation up to about plus 14. In fact, I might even take it down a bit. Click inside, down arrow to about plus 8 and maybe plus 22. Also, I point out here, if you like very warm in images, moving that over there will cause that. It's entirely up to you, but I prefer that bluey look. What else do I need to do? I need to put a graduated filter on. M on my keyboard, shift key pressed and kept pressed, drag down two thirds of the way into the image. I have a preset called standard sky. It's far too blue. I'm gonna move it up to about plus seven there or seven. So it's going, going warmer basically. Tint, no, I don't think I need any. Exposure down at 1.02. Um, I've gotta be careful I don't get banding on that sun. So I'm gonna bring that up a little bit. I'm being very careful with exposure here because if I bring it down, you'll see that band appear and I don't want that banding. So I'm going to put it, I'll double click on exposure, put it to zero, click inside and use a down arrow to go down a bit. That's as far as I'm going to go. And a tiny amount on the highlights as well, just to bring it down because I don't want any banding. Whites and blacks, fine. Clarity, I've got 10 here. Do I really need it? No, double click. Dehaze at 13, probably going to take it down to about as I've got some on the basic panel to about six, that'll do. Saturation, a small amount. So click inside, up arrow, to about four, that'll do. Sharpness, don't really need it. Noise, there's probably a bit of noise. I'm just gonna move it up to about nine or 10. The same for color noise, which is more a pattern, just a small amount. Defringing, a small amount as well. That will help round there. Now the problem I've got is, you probably not notice it. I'm also affecting the trees and stuff like that. So I've got to be careful that I'm not making those too dark as well. So I need to use the range mask on luminance. I'm going to turn show luminance mask on so I can see what's happening to this image. So there you go, there's the luminance mask. So I'm affecting those trees. How do I stop that? Bring the range up so I'm only affecting the brighter pixels. And that will start around 60 around there. So that's worked, it's got rid of it from the trees. Especially if you're really dropping the exposure, you don't want to make that any darker than it is. I'm going to zoom in, spacebar press, click, and check with that luminance mask off. I've not got any problems yet again around here. It looks okay, I'm accepting that, I think that's fine. A tiny amount there. I could probably try and get rid of that with the defringe slider a little bit more. Maybe I should try that as well. It's not as effective as the lens correction panel, but anyway, I've done it. So I'm going to close on that because I think I'm not affecting those trees, so everything's fine. Z or Z to zoom back out. So I've done my graduated filter. The only thing I need to do now, once it's rendered on screen, is the sharpening before I go into Photoshop to remove that rucksack there and amongst other things. Right, so here we are, detail, command, control five to open up that panel. I used to start with masking, but radius is better, but I need to be zoomed in. So click on those trees there, four to one zoom I've got. You can see it there, F7 to turn off that panel actually. Alt or Option key kept pressed, move the radius slider. Now you're trying to create a luminous border, which I'm seeing already. And I'm saying about 1.5, it's probably as wide as I want it. I've got a fair bit of noise as well. Now I'm going to move the amount slider when everything's caught up. This will be more like a grayscale version of your image. So alter option key kept pressed. I'm looking for noise and breakup of the image in any way at all. So around 56, I'm getting a little bit of noise, a bit of noise, I'm stopping there. 68, that'll do. Detail next. Now it's on 25 by default. Often that's the best place to keep it. It also suppresses halos below 50, but when you start bringing it up, you can see a lot of noise. So I don't have it very high, so I'm gonna to stick to around 22. Now I don't wanna sharpen the sky, Z or Z on my keyboard to zoom back out. I need to mask out the sky. Now, sometimes I do masking first, so I don't see any noise whatsoever in the sky, but alter option key pressed, drag it to the right, the darker it is, the less likely it is to be sharpened. The whiter it is, the more likely it is to be sharpened. So I want to make that sky black. I don't want to sharpen the luminance noise. 
because sharpening will accentuate luminance noise. So across around sort of around there, around 70 is working for me. I'm going to leave that sharpening as it is. I am going to zoom back in again, though, so I can see any luminance noise. And I can't see much, but I'm going to move the luminance slider with the Alt Option key pressed so I can see what's going on a little bit. And that might allow me to move up the amount slider here a little bit as well. Because amount is like the contrast dial. So I'm looking all the time here thinking, I've probably over sharpened it. I'm going to bring it back down a little bit. I'm looking for noise. And do you know something I can see hardly any on 15? Detail will preserve the sharpening in the detail areas, which is inside of that part, for instance. And contrast is about the, the edges here. It's on 50 by default. I recommend you leave it as it is. That would be absolutely fine. Color noise is so rare. Leave it on those settings. It has the least effect of any sliders here, the color, detail, and smoothness. So I don't think I've got any problems with color noise. I'm going to leave it like that, Z or Z. So I've finished with that image. As far as um, developing it, I want to get rid of that rucksack, that tree trunk, some marks in the sand here, some planes in the sky, and a bit of sun flare here and there. So into Photoshop I go. And that will be Photo Edit in Adobe Photoshop 2019. But under the preferences, check you've not messed around with this because TIFF, ProPhoto RGB, 16-bit, and 240 are the defaults and compression none. So Command and Control E is the actual keyboard shortcut. So I'm doing that now to open up this HDR image in Photoshop as a TIFF. Trying to use the spot removal tool here inside of Lightroom on a 32-bit image really slows everything down. So I prefer to do all this in Photoshop. It's reading the camera raw format. This all takes time. But don't forget, it won't be a 32-bit image in Photoshop. It'll be a 16-bit TIFF. When you save that image, it will appear back in Lightroom stacked with the others. So it'll be five images altogether. It will put the word edit in the file name as well. You can change all that, but basically, if you haven't changed that in your preferences, it will put the word edit into the file name. Here's the image. Command zero to fit on screen. As I said, I want to get rid of the rucksack and this tree trunk first. So I'm going to zoom in, Z on my keyboard, scrubby zoom tick, drag from top left to bottom right to zoom in on that. Keep zooming in and go over there. I'm going to make that a bit smaller, actually. Alter Option key pressed and kept pressed. Just click out and you'll be coming out with the zoom tool. Now, there's something called Content Aware Fill. It was already available under Edit. Fill, it'll be grayed out because we haven't got a selection, content aware there. But now there's a new content aware workspace in 2019 release. So I need to make a selection first. I'm going to use the lasso very roughly to go around this. I'm using my mouse, not my Wacom tablet today. So very roughly around this to, to get rid of this rucksack and tripod bag. That'll do. I'm going to use the Alt key quickly to tidy it up, to take some of the stuff away. And I think I might have gone too close to add in with a shift key pressed. That'll do. Edit content aware fill new in 2019. Click. It will try and get rid of this straight away. And I know what's going to happen basically. It will zoom in on that right hand one in a minute when it's all caught up. You can see what it's done. It's sampling the tree. It's still doing its work actually. On the left hand side here, Spacebar pressed to drag away. Basically, it's selecting or using the trees. Anything in green is going to be used to fill this area here. So we need to paint it away. The brush tool here, B, is always on minus by default. You can paint away those trees so it won't be using that in the sample. I'm just going to go Command minus to make it a bit smaller. So I'm going to paint away roughly, big brush, Right hand square bracket key going now. So I'm not picking any of that tree area there. So over the top, got to be careful. Don't touch anything there. I also don't want it to be picking the sand. So I'm going to take that away as well. If I quickly want to add something back in, I can just press the Alter Option key and it goes to plus there. You can see that. So that for me 
looks okay. I'm going to look in here with a bit more zoom. And I think it looks okay. It's not perfect, but it's okay. I might paint that back in. Alt there, just to paint that back in. Let's see if it helps in any way at all. Um, I might just paint around there as well. Ultra option key pressed, just around there, so. I think that looks okay. I'm quite happy with that. Okay, I'm not going to explain this. Just remember, paint away the green. Anything in green is used for sampling. If you paint it away, it can't be used. Okay, so it's done its job. I'm quite happy with that. Command and Control D to lose the marching ants or the selection. It's not perfect, but it's okay. Command zero to fit back on screen. Now, I'm going to get rid of those planes in the sky. I've decided to do them first. Spot tailing brush, J on your keyboard. And there's the spot tailing brush. It's got a little half circular row of dots like so. So I'm going to get rid of the planes in the sky. Left hand square bracket key to make the brush smaller. Just paint them away like so. Very straightforward. One more plane there. I can't see any more planes. Um, Bit of sun flare or lens flare there. Get rid of that. Click down once. And a plane there as well. Five planes in all. Right, I think that's fine. Also, where I dragged my tripod around there. And you can see arc I made by moving my tripod around. And a few footprints as well whilst I'm here. Not too many. Very roughly done. Just the ones in the foreground. Maybe there's a couple there. There's a couple there. Just to get rid of them. Very randomly I'm doing it. Nothing special. I ruined my own shot, really, but there you go. And a footprint there as well. I think that's okay. I've got some lens flare there, which is going to be difficult to get rid of. I'm going to click down once and see what happens. I think I've got rid of it. I'm going to do no more to that. Now, this trunk will cause problems. I could use the normal heel brush. It requires a sample, so you Alt or Option sample down like so. Click once and then paint away. I don't think it's going to work here. Command and Control Z or Z. I'm going to use the clone stamp tool. The S on my keyboard. There it is. Check the settings are all right. It's fine. So what this tool does, it literally picks another part of the image to paint away another part of the image. So again, with the Alter Option key press, come to about here. Alter Option key press. Click down once. Now line it up. Make sure you are lined up and come straight across and keep painting. There'll come a point when you're going over yourself again. So stop, Alter Option key press, click down once, and then come to here, line it up very carefully and come across. So I've got rid of the middle part of it. Now, left hand square bracket key to make it smaller, Alt or Option key pressed up there. I'm just going to come across these bits here and get rid of them. It's quite processor intensive. Alt or Option key press. I'm being a bit random here so I don't get any obvious marks. For this one, mm, difficult. Alt or option key pressed. I could use even the, um, sorry, I'm moving things around here. I've got to be careful. I've got to be careful here. Click. I could be a bit fussier, but I don't have time. So alt or option key pressed. I'm getting there. Alt or option key pressed. I'm trying to create randomness, but not too much. So it looks unreal. So what I'm going to do now is use the spot healing brush just to tidy up a little bit to make it look less obvious in places. So it's just a, you know, a bit more random. Get rid of any lines. I know it's not perfect, but that was difficult to remove. Take my word for it. I should be zoomed in a lot more. Apologize for that. I think that looks okay. I'll just do a quick streak down there because I can see marks. I think that looks absolutely fine. I haven't got any problems with that at all. Command zero. So now if I saved it, it will end up back in Lightroom as a TIFF and have the word edit in it as well. So I don't have to show you that really. That's basically my workflow. It's not my best shot. I picked it deliberately because I had things like my rucksack in. This was just my worst three images. I knew I had all these problems. And, it, you know, you might come across these problems when you work. So getting rid of stuff is a very important skill to have inside of Photoshop. That isn't perfect. Far from it. What I'm looking at there, I'm, I could tidy it up a little bit with the, um, the spot heel brush here. That's it, guys. Thanks very much.